at the sixth chapter. I'm going to read from the 43rd verse to the 45th verse. I'm going to read in the Passion Translation. So if you have anything different, you can just follow through with me. Jesus says, you'll never find choice fruit hanging on a bad, unhealthy tree. And rotten fruit doesn't hang on a good, healthy tree. Every tree will be revealed by the quality of fruit that it produces. Figs or grapes will never be picked of thorn trees. People are known in this same way. Out of the virtues stored in their hearts, good and upright people will produce good fruit. But out of the evil hidden in their hearts, evil ones will produce what is evil. For the overflow of what has been stored in your heart will be seen by your fruit and will be heard in your words. We're going to pray together for God to speak to us. If it's fine, would you lift your hands as an act of faith this morning? Awesome. Jesus, thank you so much for the privilege we have to gather in your name as a family. And thank you because the Bible says unto the Lord shall the garden of his people be. We come this morning longing for you to reach us in a way only you can. Please give us a word that is so simple that we would understand. But it's so profound that it will change our lives forever. Give us a word on Sunday that will change our Monday. Mark us today by your word, God. Do great and amazing things in our lives and in our church today. We thank you for it. And as a family, we want to thank you that I'm married to the most awesome woman in the world and that Liverpool would win a double. In Jesus' name and everybody said amen. 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 Hello, my you fans. Big welcome to church. And um, please be seated this morning. If you have a seat okay so I want to just get right in your face this morning and um, try to tidy up on this heartitude thing that we've been talking about for two weeks now um, started out two weeks ago I shared with you a message on dirty underwear and I really believe God has ministered that to you in a personal way and that you now use clean underwear amen in Jesus' name. Amen. Some people, it takes a special prayer. But um, last week, I shared with you a message I called Port to Stewardship. And um, today, I want to try to see if we can tidy up on attitudes Because we've been dwelling on the fact that before God, we, what is on our inside is just as important as all that happens on the outside. And so the attitudes of our heart are important to God and matter a lot to God. Today, I want to share with you a message I will call simply garrisoned garrisoned these days you guys make my topics look really stupid like I, like I don't get it from angels so I mean I'm going to take that one more time and you have to make it look good okay so this morning I'm going to share with you a message I call garrisoned better for you better for you by the way who saw Liverpool versus Bayern oh my anyway so now I want to start by asking this morning real simply to what extent Will you go to protect what is precious? To what extent will you go to protect what is precious? To what extent will you go? And that will pretty much be the burden of my thoughts to you this morning. To what extent will you go to protect what is precious? One of my nightmares growing up was, um, well, we call it a nightmare, was, I mean, I used to go to the market quite a lot when I was young, you know, um, and, you know, sometimes you, you want to buy stuff from market women, not more, market, right, and then you have to collect change, right? To what extent will you go to protect what is precious? It was a nightmare for me seeing places in a human body where a market woman will bring out change from, and you're going to have to collect that money from her. Anyway, um, Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 23 I'll start with the Amplified Classic. It says, keep and guard your heart with all vigilance and above all that you guard, for out of it flow the springs of life. In CJP, it says, above everything else, guard your heart, for it is the source of life's consequences. Your heart is the source of life's consequences. In the Passion Translation, it says, so above all, somebody say above all, Above all, guard the affections of your heart, for they affect all that you are. It says, pay attention to the welfare of your innermost being, for from there flows the wellspring of life. This morning I'll ask you, do you guard your money? 
Or do you guard your investment? Do you guard your spouse? Do you guard your job? Do you guard your car? You know, sometimes I see people putting pedal locks. And I mean, first of all, I mean, I pity a thief who would want to steal this car. But anyway, you know, but do you guard your property? Do you guard your phone? You know, some people, whether they are sleeping or they are not sleeping, if you want to steal the phone, you must steal the hand. You know? There was a, one of my guys that went for a trip at some water place and, you know, there was this sudden wave and then he just had this new phone and the water was about to sweep him off. He literally threw his phone out of the water. To, for the, <laughs> do, you guard, do you guard your browsing history? Then the Bible says, above all that you guard, guard your heart. Because if you get it right with your heart, then the Bible says every other thing flows out of it. If you get it right with the guarding of your heart, it's like playing on a guitar that is rightly tuned. But if the tuning is already wrong, everything else you try to play on it is wrong. That's assuming you knew how to play before. <laughs> but the Bible says above everything that you guard, guard your heart. This is what I want to say to you this morning. If your heart is guarded, your browsing history will be different. So, simply put, if you refocus the effort you put into guarding your browsing history, into guarding your heart, your right heart will change your browsing history. Amen. Amen. If you refocus the effort you put into guarding your browsing history, into guarding your heart, your right heart will change browsing history. In Luke 6 and verse 45 that we read, the Bible says people are known in this same way. Out of the virtue stored in their hearts, good and upright people will produce good fruits. That's what the Bible says. But out of the evil hidden in their hearts, evil ones will produce what is evil. For the overflow, the overflow as what has been stored in your heart will be seen by your fruit and will be heard in your words. You can't deny it. It's out of your heart that there will be an outright flow. So let me tell somebody this morning, garrison, garrison, garrison your heart. I'll ask you this morning, what does your picture of garden, you know what a garrison is? What does your picture of garrison in your heart look like? What does it look like? Let me see if I have two pictures to show you on the screen. What does your picture of guarding your heart? Does this kind of look like, your, your, you know, like there's an alertness about guarding your heart? Or does it look like this? Second. What's your picture? This is the way some people's heart is. Anything can just pass, come out, go in, you know. What's your picture of God in your heart? Because the Bible says above everything that you got, above everything that you got. In 2017, Nigeria spent about $1,650 million on the military. Well, I mean, that's the amount that was on the paper. How much got there is another question, but... $1,650 million on the military. UK spent $47 billion US dollars on military. The American 2018 defense budget is just under $700 billion. Just under $700 billion on defense spending. Because at the end of the day, our lives do not look like our background. At the end of the day, our lives do not look like our education. At the end of the day, our lives do not look like our opportunities. Our lives look like our hearts. At the end of the day, it's not about having a great opportunity. It's about having a great heart. At the end of the day, it's not about having a great education. It's about having a great heart. Our lives will ultimately look like our heart. The same thing can happen to five people. Five people had a breakup. Five people got a new opportunity. Five people were abused. Five people, the same thing happens to five people. And based on their heart, the outcome in their lives is different. It's not about what happens to you. It's first of all about the heart. I want to say this to you. I'm not saying this out of insensitivity, but I want to say something on the authority of God's word. Specifically to help somebody. Listen to me, as terrible and as crazy and as senseless as abuse is, as crazy as it is, as crazy as it is to be abused, it is never a justification to live a negative life. 
as crazy as it and all of that as it can, it is not a justification to live a negative life. The fruit of our lives are, not, are a function of our heart, not our experiences. The same abuse happened to 10 people. Eight people became stronger. Two people became, you know, negative philosophers, you know. And I say it on the authority of God's word. No experience is a justification to live a negative life. Whether your background, whether opportunities you didn't get, whether it is a function of your heart, not of your experiences. Look at Luke 6.45. The Bible says, for the overflow of what has been stored in your heart will be seen by your fruit and will be heard in your words. The overflow of what is stored in your heart. I want to ask people this morning, are you losing your heart in the name of being busy? Living in a very busy world, there's so much happening and so much you come back tired. Are you losing the place of guarding your heart in the name of being busy? In 1 Kings chapter 20, the Bible says from verse 39, as the king passed by, he cried out to the king and said, please watch this everybody, your servant went out in the midst of the battle. So there was a battle going on and I think this is a picture of life that we all deal with. There's a lot, there's a battle. And there a man came over and brought a man to me and said, watch what he said. He said, guard this man. If by any means he's missing, your life shall be for his life. That's a picture to me of my heart. Guard it. If you lose your heart, it's your life. Or else you shall pay talent of silver. Who pay for loss of their hearts terribly. Verse 14, now look at this. While your servant was busy here and there, he was gone. My servant was busy here and there. And I pray this will not be the story of my heart. While I was busy here and there, I lost my heart. While I was busy here and there trying to make a career, I lost my heart. While I was busy here and there trying to get into a relationship, I lost my heart. While I was busy here and there, I lost. He said, while your servant was busy here and there, he was gone. He said, guard your heart. Let me tell somebody this morning, garrison your heart. Is your heart healthy? You have a healthy heart. I want to say to everybody this morning, health is not a momentary feeling. Health is a direction of life. Health is not a way you feel in a moment. Health is a direction of life. It's a way we live. Please note that. Health is not about waking up and feeling good. Health is about your, your habits. Health is about how you live. It's a way of life. The leading cause of death in the world today is heart-related, heart disease cost. One out of every four, some people seven, death is caused by heart disease. Because people are busy. You know, many people in the natural are flanging, they're chilling, they're, they look fine, they're doing everything, and then suddenly they have a heart attack. Because they were never healthy. They were busy doing everything but losing their heart. And he said, if you lose the heart, you lose the life. In 1 Samuel chapter 14, verse 11. 1 Samuel 14 and verse 11. There is there's this picture of how we can be undefeated in the now. But what's hiding in the hopes? The Bible says both of them, this was Jonathan and his armor bearer showed themselves to the garrison of the Philistines. So the Philistines had a garrison. And the Philistines said, look, the Hebrews are coming out of the holes where they have been hiding. Is it possible you're building a garrison and there are holes where things are hiding? Is it possible you do your heart in such a way that, you know, on the surface it looks healthy, but there are holes where things are hiding? There's so many creepy things in the day and the age in which we live, if we'll be honest. There are creepy things creeping out of holes, hiding in the holes. How is our heart accessed? How, how, how does anything get access to your heart? Through what you hear, through what you see, basically. How many things creep out of holes on us in the day and the age that we live? Do you, do you guard your heart space from creepy things, the, the creepy things in the holes? Do you guard your heart space? Why are you just that person sleeping? They say, guard your heart. Above everything you got, guard your heart. You're just sleeping on it. They're hiding in the holes. In 
Proverbs chapter 25, verse 28, in NLV, the Bible says, A man who cannot rule his own spirit is like a city whose walls are broken down. A man who has no rule over his heart is like a city whose walls are broken down. There's just free access for anything. But you never have a heart that has no walls, no walls, no walls. No sense of structure, no sense of order, no restriction, no. It just comes in and goes out as it likes to. The Bible says if you don't have rule over your heart, you are like a city that has, whose walls are broken down. What, what hides in the holes? We live in a generation where many creepy things wrap around holes, wrap around holes, hide in the holes. You know, it just looks very ordinary. We just feel, I'm just on social media. I'm just, you know, doing life. I'm just going out every day. I'm just in the community. But things just come wrapping around holes. Before you know what is happening, your heart is fearful. And you're wondering, where did fear come from? Because things just come wrapping around holes, wrapping in the holes, you know, just looking out on us, just trying to creep in from the holes. And we must be people who are sensitive to guard our hearts. Let me talk for a minute about fear. In Genesis chapter 4 and verse 7, um, I just want to give you a couple of examples of things that hide in holes. Genesis 4 and verse 7, God said to Cain, If you do well, will not your countenance be lifted up? He says, and if you do not do well, sin is crouching at the door. And his desire is for you, but you must master it. I feel like God was prophesying this to Cain about our generation, you know. Sin is crouching at the door. You know what I'm talking about? It's like it's just waiting on you. It's just waiting on the day you'll be stupid, right? I mean, it, it doesn't take effort to sin. It's not hard to sin. Do you understand what I'm saying? It just takes some carelessness, some, you know, picking a wrong call. Do you understand what I'm saying? Not everybody, some of you don't know what sin is. You're asking which sin of the movie. I'm talking of sin. Sin. It's not hard to sin. The Bible says sin is crouching at the door and it's desires for you. It's creepy. And if we allow holes in our garrison, holes, it just creeps in on us. In 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 7, Passion Translation says, For God will never give you the spirit of fear, but the Holy Spirit who gives you mighty power, love, and self-control but somehow we find ourselves living with a lot of fear why it's creepy it just has a way of coming for your heart and you're living in fear and you're wondering how you became so afraid of everything i just afraid fear like a bondage it's just holding your heart and the bible says god will never will never give you a spirit of fear where do we get it from maybe some whatsapp statuses you have been reading you know you can't read some people's WhatsApp status. And you'll just be depressed. <laughs> Who knows what I'm talking about? When you get it from, it's creepy. And it just looks to you like you're just chilling. But it's a heart battle. And we must know the realities of a garrison around our heart. And the Bible says, above everything you guard. Above everything you guard. If you guard your devices, if you guard your stuff, if you guard your, you know, your spouse, if you, whatever you guard, Above everything you got, the Bible says, guard your heart. It hides in the holes. The interesting thing with fear is that it can wrap around anything. Fear in itself can wrap around anything. Have you noticed that even when God will send an angel, the first thing he will say is, fear not. <laughs> Have you noticed it can wrap around anything? It can wrap around the most amazing opportunity you just got. That is the great blessing of God. Then you are afraid that what if I fail? <laughs> People have been looking forward to their marriage all their lives. Then now it's coming. And instead of being excited and giving God glory. So what if that day, they now say, does anybody have any reason? Somebody now raises up his hand. <laughs> then the wedding comes and goes. Then you say, ah, what if after the wedding, my husband, me and my uh, spouse, were not sexually compatible? Whatever that means. <laughs> then you now say, what if uh, our children, what if we give back to children and children don't like us? Ha, <laughs> huh, you're not afraid about it. Then your children like you now say, what if my grandchildren don't love me? Do you understand? It will just keep wrapping around the next thing. Because fear itself is a spirit. And it doesn't, it's not about a bad thing or a good thing. It's, it's that fear we must confront. That sense of, look, God will never give you the spirit of fear. Refuse to allow fear to just creep in on our hearts, to take advantage of anything and the holes in the garrison. And people are in the most amazing opportunities of their life and they're losing it because of fear. is fear and fear must be confronted i want to say to people don't justify fear confront it in the name of jesus 
Don't justify fear. Don't justify fear. Confront it in the name of Jesus. Garrison your heart. Close up the holes. You had a bad dream. I don't make a digression and talk about it. Let me do this in two minutes. You had a bad dream. And then you say, oh, something happened in a dream. And then because of that, you're walking around every day full of fear. It's like there's one bad thing that is about to happen. Let me say this. I particularly just want to digress and say this. Three ways that you have dreams. Number one, God can give you a dream. Alright? Number one, God can give you a dream like he did with Joseph. He gives you a dream. And God gives dreams to give you a sense of hope. Do you notice that Joseph did not have a dream of Potiphar's wife? Do you notice he had a dream of authority? <laughs> God gives you dreams to give you a sense of hope. Not to terrify you. Alright? Joel chapter 2 and verse 28, God promises and says that it will come to pass in the last days. You know, your old men shall dream dreams. God gives dreams, but to give us a sense of hope. Now, flip second thing, and there's nothing fantastic about God giving you a dream, by the way. It's not a spiritual gift. It's just one of those things that usually most times happens to responsible Christians, most times. All right? Because if my father today posts a letter to me through night post, what's the first thing you do? You check your phone. Do you understand what I'm saying? Why did you go and send a letter to me through night post? Through post office. That's the first thing I'll do. I'll first check my phone. Does he still have my number? If God has put his Holy Spirit in me. Okay. Second, second way that you can have a dream is the devil. The devil can give dreams. So God allows him to do that. In Matthew chapter 13, the Bible says, While men slept, the enemy came and sowed, you know, tears among the wheat. While men slept, symbolic. In Job 7 and verse 14, Job says, You scare me with dreams. This is the devil. And terrify me with visions. <laughs> but the reason why God allows the devil to give you dreams, and in fact, let me put it this way. If you are the devil and you want to kill somebody, will you give him a dream of him dying or will you kill him? The reason why he gives you a dream of you dying is because he can't kill you until you're afraid of it and you open the doors through fear. So he's, he, 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 um, Jezebel sent messengers to Elijah and said, by this time tomorrow I'll kill you. Uh -uh. Who wants to kill somebody and send messenger? You send us a sin. If it's sure for you. But that fear was what made Elijah himself start to run and say, I'm no better than my father. Do you understand what I'm saying? So the devil gives you a dream. It is not for you to now start to live in fear. It is for you to take authority. And personally, I have a habit. The devil puts a dream in my heart. I pray about it once and I don't repeat the prayer. It's simple. Authority is authority. It's not by praying for 21. No, no, no. I tell the devil no and I can't. And that's the end. Do you understand what I'm saying? I don't, don't live in fear. It's creepy. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Because when you have prayed 12 days, how will you know that the 13th day will cancel it? Do you understand what I'm saying? How do you know 21 days will cancel it? If you don't believe in the authority from the word go, you will never believe. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? And the third way people have dreams is through activity. Ecclesiastes chapter 5 and verse 3. The Bible says, for a dream comes through much activity. So, so all through the day you are watching horror movie, killer movie, they were shooting boo, 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 boo. then the night, you now dreamt people are shooting, you now say that devil is, it's not devil, they are doing part two in your, in your dream that's all, that's all, it's activity do you understand what I say? Garrison your heart close off the holes, wise people know that there is no suddenly about life, heart attack it's not sudden, there was an unhealthy habit all the while nothing is sudden about life Jesus said the heart produces fruit. Did you see that word fruit? Do you know what fruit means? Fruit means that you will sow a seed. Fruit means that you will water it. That it will grow. Do you understand what I'm saying? It will find the right atmosphere. It will find the right relationships. You will keep it from gardener. Hmm? Fruit means that you will keep it from some people that will take it out. Do you understand what I'm saying? Do you understand what I'm saying? Fruit means that you will keep it from church service. You will not join life group. That's why it is fruit. It is not sudden. Heart attack is not sudden. It looks sudden, but it's not sudden. So wise people know that war is not a time for defense strategy meetings. It's not a time. When you are fight, fight, fighting war, it's not a time to start building a defense strategy, no. It's a time to reveal defense strategies that you had built in the time of peace. Wise people know that it's not in the time of war that you now start to, no, you only reveal what you had built in the time of peace. Life will reveal your heart. I want to ask this morning, is your heart inclined? We are talking about this the other day. Is your heart inclined towards faith? Is your heart inclined towards trust? Is your heart inclined towards courage? Is your heart inclined towards a sense of vision? Is your heart inclined towards wisdom? 
So people, the Bible says, you know when I read Proverbs sometimes, I say if I live foolish. Because huh? <laughs> the Bible says wisdom is crying out. <sighs> but people are not hearing. People are still making foolish decisions. Wisdom stands at the open places of the city and is crying out. And people are still making foolish choices. Because our hearts are inclined to something entirely different. We're not even hearing. You have to ask yourself, is my heart inclined? Am I, am I leaning towards wise choices? You, you know, look at your environment. Look at the way you set up your heart. Are you leaning towards wise choices? Or are you just a matter of time away from, you know, a very foolish choice? Your heart inclined. Are there just creepy holes of foolishness? Creepy holes of foolishness. Sometimes represented in people. Creepy holes of foolishness. Crouching at the door. You know, something's happening. What's the first call you make? I just, because you're always available, I just feel like I can always talk to you. <laughs> uh, don't go to the available. <laughs> okay. And you know, more than ever before, there is an invasion against the person of the heart. But today, I want to give you a very simple key. I've said a lot about how important it is to guard our hearts. I'm going to try and give you a simple key this morning. And, um, <clears throat> excuse me, let's see how, where God would help us get to with this. Now, I want to, the key I want to give you is that your garrison is not just a defense. If you're writing, please write this down. If you're not writing, I'm judging you. Your garrison is not just a defense. It is an attack. Your garrison is not just a defense. It is an attack. Makes good sense. Your garrison is not just a defense. It is an attack. Your garrison is not just a defense. When we say we're garrison in our hearts, it's not just a defense. It is an attack. Philippians 4 from verse 6, Amplified Classic, the Bible says, Do not fret or have anxiety about anything, but in every circumstance. So now, let's, let's build this thought together. We start many times the picture of life from, you know, there's a lot to fret about, there's a lot to be anxious about, and all of that. But the Bible says, you know what, don't fret, don't have anxiety, but in every circumstance, so we're starting from a defense, okay? In every circumstance and in everything, by prayer and petition, that's definite request with thanksgiving, continue to make your your want, okay? So we're guarding, we're defending against fretting and against anxiety. Are you, are you following me? This is like, you know, Van Dyke. Do you understand what I'm saying? I'm already in semi-final of Champions League. I hope you're aware. Okay, so and I'm going to win the dog. It's amazing how, you know, anyway, so so, ah, God, please. Anyway, so, 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 so don't fret. Don't have an, I, I will make mouth in this church. Just calm down. Don't fret. Don't have any anxiety about anything. But in every circumstance, are you still in Liverpool? Are you? Eh? Ah. With thanksgiving, okay, continue to make your wants known to God. Now look at verse 7. The Bible says, and God's peace shall be yours that tranquil state of his soul assured of its salvation through Christ and so fearing nothing from God and being content with its earthly Lord of whatever sort that is move me on that peace which transcends all understanding the Bible says it will garrison and mount guard over your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. So we start out by defending and then we have the peace of God giving us a garrison and mounting guard over our hearts. Glory to God. I love that thought. But I want to move you on to verse 8. So that has already happened. Now we move to verse 8. I'll switch to Amplified now. Finally, believers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable and worthy of respect, whatever is right and confirmed by God's word, watch this, whatever is pure and wholesome, Whatever is lovely and brings peace, whatever is admirable and of good repute, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think continually 
All right? We started out, we were fretting, we were anxious. God's peace began to give us a garrison and guard our heart. But we didn't just stop at defending against all the things that were coming now. We start to launch an attack. It says whatever things are true and all of that. It says think continually on these things. Look at this. Center your mind on them and implant them in your heart. I want to say to people this morning, we must go beyond merely negating wrong thoughts to actually thinking right thoughts. We must go beyond merely guarding against wrong thoughts. We must start to cultivate meditations of the right things that should be on our hearts. We're not just saying we don't want to fear. We are saying we want to live by faith. We're not just saying we don't want to be depressed. We're saying we're living a life full of joy in the overflow. Do you understand what I'm saying? We must go beyond guarding against and negating wrong thoughts. We must come to a place where we're actually launching an attack with the very right thoughts. We are centering our mind. We are implanting them in our hearts. Cultivate meditations. Defend your heart with your attack. Defend your heart with your attack. I was writing this morning and I would say to you everybody, I was telling myself the problems came late. I had already decided that I'm a praiser. Depression came late. My heart was already given to joy. Offense came late. Bitterness came late. My heart was already sold out to love. Fear came late. I had already tuned my heart to faith. It's like you have TV stations, okay? You know if you walk into a house and then, you know, they switch off the TV just before you come. By the nature of the conversation, you can tell what they were just watching. <laughs> Tim, come, I'm almost done. By the nature of the conversation, you can tell what they were just watching. So you walk into a house and then, you know, they've, they've turned off the TV, but everybody is saying that they don't trust anybody in the family. Everybody is looking at themselves. Somebody says, come and eat your food. They say, no, I will not eat it. I was not there when you cook it, you know? They've just been watching half mark. Do you understand what I'm saying? <laughs> Yoruba, actually. Do you understand what I'm saying? <laughs> you're walking and somebody say, saying, See, Ronaldo is better than Messi. Say, Lie. Your father, your uncle. Hey, Messi. See, Ronaldo's got three. Messi's got two. They've just been watching Super Sport. Right? If you walk in and they are saying, uh, ah, New Zealand shootings and blah, 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 and all of that, they've just been watching a new station. Are, are you hearing me this morning? Now, all of those stations exist together on the subscription. But the choice of what they tuned to determines what they know and what they don't even know. So the person that is talking about New Zealand shootings might not even know that they were killing somebody in Agbo because he's tuned to something else. And it becomes the reality of his life. Everything that's making everybody afraid outside there that they're running away from, he just happens to be tuned to something else. And it becomes the reality of his life. So you get into a, into, into, into a room and you meet Manu fans crying. You understand why? And I want to say, people, that we must not allow this generation to, to we must not allow this generation to distune our heart, to make us start to watch the wrong thing. That was never even the point. We must not allow this generation to start to determine the station, to hold the remote control and tell us, watch this. And then we're reacting to that. We're trying to negate it, negate it, negate it. And at some point in your life, you're going to tell yourself, my life is more than negating fear. My life is about building faith. At some point in your life, you're going to tell yourself, my life is more than avoiding offense and avoiding and forgiving. I will choose to forgive one more time. My heart is about stretching the extent of the love of God. At some point in your life, you realize your life is more than avoiding distractions. Your life is about living for vision. Chloe, are you hearing me this morning? And it's a battle on your heart, people. We must not allow this generation to change our race. I want to say that before sin comes creeping, I already have my station. Before life comes and this generation comes, the problem is that you came late. I had already picked my stations. I had already picked what I was watching. Before sin came creeping, I had already picked Psalm 119 and 11. It says, your word have I hidden in my heart that I will not sin. I had already made my choice before sin came. I'd already chosen to say, you know what? I'm going to hide God's word in my heart. I was already building on this. This was my attack. That by the time sin came, I had already filled my heart with God's word. Before bitterness and brokenness came, Everybody was talking about marriages that are broken and how homes will not work. 
I already sold my heart. Romans 5 and 5 says that the love of God is shed abroad in your heart by the Holy Spirit. I'd already given my heart to the love of God. I'd already poured my heart in that direction. And I was so full of love that when the world was talking about how you can't even trust people, you can't even follow any, you can't even just allow. I was so full of the love of God. Love believes all things. Love hopes all things. Love never fails. I was so full of it. Problem is offense came late. Before crisis came, I'd already made a choice. And I'd already allowed the peace of God that passes all understanding to guard my heart. When crisis came knocking, it meant the peace of God guarding my heart. It meant the peace of God taking caressing over my heart. I'd made my choice in advance. Because if you don't launch your attack, people, if you sit down and think, I'll keep defending, I'll keep defending, at some point the pressure gets heavy. But I'm so glad that I can launch my attack. Have my heart full of God's word. Have my heart full of the love of God. Have my heart full of the peace of God. Peace of God which passes all understanding. Will guard your heart. Will guard your heart. Will guard your heart. And everybody says, ah, but this is what is happening in the world. I'm like, I don't, I don't even feel it because God's peace is guarding my heart. It's guarding my heart. <laughs> Glory to God. Fears of the future came knocking. Anxieties came knocking. Fears about the future. And all that life was trying to throw at me. But Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 5 said, Let your heart conduct be without covetousness. Be content with such things as you have. For God himself has said, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. Therefore, I take comfort. We may boldly say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear what can man. You know why I won't fear? I'd already decided ahead of time that God is my helper in every situation of life. I'd already made up my mind that God is going to be my helper. Come what may. It doesn't matter what comes at me. Fears of the future. Anxiety. It doesn't matter what comes at me. I already decided that God is my helper. Before negativity came. Depression. Sadness. <laughs> Romans 12 and verse 11. I love this. The Bible says, be enthusiastic to serve the Lord. Keep your passion towards Him boiling hot. You know what I do? I wake up every morning saying, you know what? I'm already enthusiastic to serve the Lord. I don't even know what I'm going to meet today. But I make my choice ahead that today is a day for enthusiasm. Today is a day for boiling hot passion. That's how I guard my heart. You launch the attack, people. <laughs> Radiate with the glow of the Holy Spirit. And let Him fill you with excitement. As you serve him. Do you notice you are not sitting down to wait to see if today will be an exciting day? Sitting down to wait to see if today will be a day full of passion. Sitting down to see if today we have enough to make me enthusiastic. No people, I've already made up my mind ahead of time that I'm enthusiastic about life, that my passion towards God is boiling hot. You wake up on a Sunday morning and the devil got your number and he sent you 10 top reasons why today is a sad day and you shouldn't go to church. And then you wake up and you start reading all the reasons one by one and you say, Satan, I agree with you. Hey, Satan, your message came late. I had already decided that waking up is a day of enthusiasm. Waking up is a day of boiling hot passion, people. Right here with the glow of the Holy Spirit. Let feel you. That's why I love Psalm 100. Psalm 100 from verse 1. Look at this. It says, make a joyful shout to the Lord. All you lands. It says, serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence. Did you notice that? Come before his presence with singing. It wasn't even about his presence giving you a reason to sing. You had made up your mind already. That even coming, I'm already coming with singing. <laughs> I, love, I love Psalm 100 verse 1 in the Passion Translation. Look at this. It says, lift up a great shout of joy to the Lord. Go ahead and do it. Everyone, everywhere. You know the way I want to live my life? Go ahead and do it. Don't wait for things to happen and everything has to add up. Go ahead and do it. Go ahead and do that joy thing. Go ahead and do that enthusiasm thing. You're waiting for your balance to be right. Go ahead and do it, people. Go ahead and do it. Go ahead and do it. <laughs> Go ahead and do it. Maybe by the end of the year, go ahead and do it, okay? Maybe by the time I get the relay, go ahead and do it. When the opportunity, when the result, when my health, go ahead and do it, people. Go ahead.
ahead and do it. Let me look at somebody next to you. Say, go ahead and do it. Go ahead and do the joy thing. Stop waiting on life. Waiting on your garrison. Your garrison. It's not just a defense. It is an attack. When you wake up and you go ahead and do joy. <laughs> and things are trying to hit on you and they're just bouncing off. It came late. It came late. My heart was already sold to joy. It came late. I've got a heart of faith. I want to be able to say that this heart is a heart on a pursuit of God. May I be described as a man after God's own heart. May I be described as a man after the very heart of God. But a man whose heart is just a victim of, of news and of may I be described as a man after God's own heart. Would you say with me this morning, everybody? Say the problems came late. I had already decided that I'm a praiser. If you're not standing, stand with us this morning. Say that again. The problems came late. I had already decided that I'm a praiser. Say depression came late. My heart was already given to joy. Say offense and bitterness came late. My heart was already sold out to love. Say fear came late. I had already chewed my heart to faith. Somebody say I'm a man after God's heart. Say that again. I'm a man after God's heart. Come on, let's go ahead and give him praise. this morning and just begin to say God my heart is sold out to you God my heart is yours begin to say God take your place in my heart God I give you my heart give me a heart of faith God pour out faith into my heart I want to have a heart of courage a heart of strength I don't want a heart that is creepy and holy and you know failing me God I want to set the right cards over my heart I need your help Holy Spirit somebody begin to pray I will be a man after God's own heart I will be a woman after God's own heart in the name of Jesus begin to mount a garrison begin to mount a garrison around your heart somebody begin to mount a garrison begin to speak for joy begin to speak for peace begin to speak for faith in the name of Jesus begin to speak for the integrity begin to speak for soundness of heart begin to speak for soundness of your mind begin to speak for wholeness in your heart in the name of Jesus the strength of my inside the strength in my heart my heart is not a failing heart I speak to every area of sickness right now and we speak health to our hearts we speak health to our hearts we're not an accident away we're
were not a failure away in the name of Jesus I have a healthy heart my life is bringing forth good fruit my heart is producing good fruit somebody respond somebody respond Sing it on. There's a peace for me all understanding. Let it flow where my mind's understanding. All anxiety bows to the presence of Jesus. Somebody receive it this morning. Come on, sing it again. Somebody receive it this morning. Somebody needs to hear that. All anxiety. Peace is a promise. Can you sing you are peace? receive it Lord it's guarding our hearts and it's leading us in the pathways of life 
And so in the name of Jesus, we believe that all our hearts will produce out of the peace of God that passes understanding. We will not produce lives out of fear. We will not produce relationships out of fear. We will not produce career decisions out of fear. But in the name of Jesus, the peace of God that surpasses all human understanding will guard our hearts and will lead us in life now and forevermore. In Jesus' name and everybody full of faith said amen and praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. If it's fine, let's remain standing for a moment. I want to make an invitation. Somebody came to church this morning and you're not in the right place with God. I don't know how you came about being here. I don't know how this service has been for you. But I want to make an invitation this morning. I want to ask you about the state of your soul before God. Because at the end of the day, it's not about putting up a performance. It's not about trying to be positive. It's not about thinking nice thoughts. It's first of all about something that happens on our inside. When we surrender the Lordship of our lives to Jesus... He forgives us all our sins. He forgives us everything we've done wrong. And he gives us his life so that we can live for him. And we get to be a member of his family on earth and in heaven. And today can be that day that that miracle will take place in your life. Today can be the day when you would say, I know for certain that I'm born again. Today can be the day when you say, I know I had made a decision before, but I'd lost my way with God and I came back today. Today can be that day that would mark you forever. And so I'm handing out this invitation. If you're there and you say you're speaking to me, I'm going to ask you across this room, can we all close our eyes and bow our heads? Let's give somebody a chance. Somebody came to church this morning and needs to be made right with God. Needs to be made right with a loving Father who is inviting you to himself this morning. If you say that's me, you're speaking to me. I'm going to ask you to raise up your hand high and unashamed. I'm going to count to three. Raise up your hand high and unashamed. Let Jesus see you. Let him know you. Let him know you're taking a stand for him. God bless you. Hands already going up. One two, three. Shoot it up high and unashamed. God bless you wherever you are across this room. From the front to the back, God bless you. Left to the right, God bless you. Hold it up a minute. It's a miracle. It's a miracle. Today will be a new beginning in your life. God bless you. If you want to join it, please do that. Hold it up long enough. Let me see your hand. Let me know who I want to pray for this morning. God bless you. If you want to join it, please do that. God bless you. More hands. I see your hand there. God bless you. God bless you. It's a miracle happening in your life right now. It's a miracle. God sees your sincerity. God bless you. Today's the day that you put the devil to shame and you boldly say, I'm a child of God, the son of the creator of the universe, the daughter of the almighty God. Today's the day. It's a miracle. In Jesus' name, if you raised up your hand, please put it down. Let's open our eyes and together, let's give God praise. Let's give God praise. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. I congratulate everybody making that decision this morning. It's amazing. God sees your sincerity. If you raised your hand, I trust that a team member would have noted and would have given you a slip. Please fill it. We just want to see how we can help you in your walk with God. And if nobody walked up to you and you made that decision, please, after the service, stop at the connection lounge by the Ask Me desk and tell somebody I made a decision for Jesus. We just want to help you take those first steps with God. Now, this is a family, not a crowd. What we're going to do is we're going to say prayer together. Everybody's going to join in. If you raised up your hand, say with deliberateness. The Bible says with our hearts we believe and we confess with our mouth unto salvation. God hears your heart this morning. Can we all say together this morning, Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father I come to you today, come to you today because, you've made a way because you've made a way through the death the burial, the burial and the resurrection, the resurrection of your son Jesus. Son Jesus. So I believe, I believe that Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ is, the God, is the son of God and he's the savior of the and world. Of the world. Of the world. Say today, today I, come to I come to you asking you to forgive me you to forgive of everything in the past and to give me a whole new start. Say today is the beginning of a new life for me. I'm your child. I will live for you. I will, live for I will you. stand for you. Stand Say, for fill you. me with your grace. Fill me with, fill your, grace. Fill me with your spirit. Fill with your Say, put the right heart in me. Put the right heart heart and I will live for you. I'll live for One, you. Day, One day, I'll be with you in heaven. You in in heaven. Jesus' name. Jesus. And everybody said, praise the Lord. And amen, and amen. Clap your hands, all you people.